Okay, the recording is on. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to BC314, our course on media and technology in ministry. Um, and um, yeah, uh, sorry about the delay in getting this course started this semester. Uh, we couldn't get it done so far, but I'm glad that we are able to connect and I'm sure we'll have a good time as we journey through this course. Uh, for almost all of you, I think, uh, this will be your last semester and your, uh, uh, you know, you, you'll all be graduating uh, end of this semester uh, in May. So I'm excited about that as well for all of you. Uh, you've persevered, you've stayed uh, with our classes, especially as we journey through the pandemic and come out of it, and here we are. So wonderful. Let's take a moment just to pray together, and then we will get started. Could somebody lead us in prayer, please? Go ahead. Um. Um, dear God, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you so much, God, for the opportunity to learn about media and technology. Lord, you're so good and been faithful throughout all these years. And as we're about to learn more, that you fill us with your wisdom and understanding that we grasp the truth and um, everything that you have for us to learn and understand, God. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Ashish. As he's about to teach, Lord, that you fill him with the of your spirit. And as he teaches, God, that we will understand and be able to grasp it too. So, God, thank you, Lord, for everything. We need to pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. And once again, welcome. So, this course, let's get the course introduced media and technology and ministry and uh, the 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 positioning uh, of this course um, now one of the things that uh, at least in my journey uh, as a pastor uh, over the last uh, you know two decades in, in, in setting in, in in pastoring all people's church here in Bangalore and of course even times before that but I'm speaking mainly from this journey was that um, whether I liked it or not, uh, I had to be involved in so many decisions that had to do with media and technology. So I could not say, hey, I'm a pastor, so don't trouble me with that. And I couldn't say that, you know. Right from the very beginning, on day one, uh, we had to make basic decisions like, you know, we had to buy a small amplifier, we had to buy two speakers and maybe three mics. And I had no idea. <laughs> I literally had no understanding of uh, audio equipment, uh, no understanding of how all this works. I didn't even know, you know, how do you connect a, a mic to amplify? I had no idea. I'm going back to the very beginning, you know. I had no idea, but I had to make a decision. Yeah, we have to, we need to buy uh, speakers. You need to buy some microphones. And uh, those days we had this small overhead projector and all those things, you know. So that's how it all started. And uh, I had to make this, you know, make this, of course, we would talk to people and say, you know, please tell me what I should buy and or what I shouldn't buy and so on and so forth. And then as you made the journey over the years, uh, there were a lot of other things that began to play. Uh, there was the internet. Uh, so we had to record you know, the sermons, the internet came in the picture, we, you know, we could put sermons online. Uh, oh, the, uh, the internet also became a way to communicate with people, get information, and then, you know, things have just exploded over the this last 20 years. So what has happened, uh, just speaking practically over the last 20 years, is even though for me, as a pastor, yes, my primary responsibility would be to teach and preach the Word of God. Um, I found that I cannot escape the fact that I have to be involved in 
these decisions that actually deal with media and technology. Now, for me, okay, uh, I'm interested. Uh, I like to learn. Uh, I like to, you know, understand these things and be involved, even though uh, I myself am not directly doing the work. You know, there are a lot of other people who are doing the work, but uh, they will come to the pastor. And many of you may have experienced the same thing, that when you are leading your ministry, uh, uh, yes, there will be people who are responsible for the media, the audio, and, you know, what's happening on online, etc. But usually they'll come to you to make decisions. Maybe it's about money, how much do we spend? Can we spend money on this or that? You know, should we buy this equipment? Should we buy that equipment? Or, um, you know, should we hire, rent this kind of equipment? They come to you as though you are the expert, as though you know everything. <laughs> but actually, you know, we don't. But because you are in that position as a leader uh, in charge of that ministry, uh, finally, the, you know, those decisions come back to you. Uh, in this whole space. And not only that, but th you also have to provide vision to the people saying, let's go in this direction, let's tap into this opportunity, or let's try to do this, or this is how we should position ourselves when it comes to uh, social media platforms or uh, delivering of our content online. You know, this is how, th these are the areas, let's do it. You know, because the people themselves who are, who are volunteering or working in the organization, they may be very focused on just getting their thing done. They may not be having a, 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 a an outward look on, hey, there are all these opportunities we could tap into for ministry, uh, or, sorry, there are, uh, there are all these, excuse me, oh, just, Anyway, um, there are all these opportunities that happen for ministry. There are all these avenues for growth and so on and so forth. They may not be thinking or they may not even be exposed to those things. So as a leader, um, you know, you need to be looking out. You need to be mobilizing, pointing the way, pointing the direction for people to go into, right? So. From both these, for both these reasons, one, people coming to you to make decisions concerning media and technology, and second, for you to be more of a visionary, a point of moving people, saying, "Let's go, let's do these things, let's try out these things." For both these reasons, uh, I felt that um, we need to have a course like this, a media and technology uh, in ministry. So we introduced this course. Um, maybe just two years ago, I think. Uh, before that, we did have a course on contemporary methods in ministry where we covered few ideas. Um, uh, so we were doing that course, contemporary methods in ministry for several years. And then maybe two years ago or three years ago, uh, I said, look, we need to change everything because there's so much more that's happening uh, in media and technology and we need to inform people. I mean, those who are preparing for ministry and, um, and give them an exposure and all these things um, uh, so that it'll be helpful for them to make decisions. So this is a non-technical course. That means uh, we're not going to tell you, you know, uh, technically how to, uh, uh, you know, plug in your whatever devices or whatever. But at the same time, there is a lot of technical information that, we're going to get across to you. Uh, we are not going to, you know, so you're not going to be tested on, you know, the configuration you need for live streaming or the configuration that you need for your uh, in-house audio and your broadcast audio, or you're not going to be tested on those things. I'm going to share that information with you um, so that you can keep it with you as a reference point. And uh, if and when you need to use it in your ministry, uh, at least you have a place to go to, and you can definitely build on it. And secondly, uh, as a as a leader, when people are talking to you about these things, at least you have some understanding. And okay, I know what they're saying. Uh, or if they tell me why we need speakers and you know these number of speakers in the auditorium, okay, there is a logic to it, and 
yeah, I understand what they're saying. Uh, or maybe sometimes they're telling you something that's wrong and maybe you can say, hey, maybe we don't need those speakers or have you done this test? Or you know, you can ask some very meaningful questions uh, that will get your people to look at the right thing. So uh, we are going to share a lot of useful information but remember this is not a technical course so we're not going to test you on you know how to do it and so on uh, it's more of a it's good for you to know these things because as even though you're a, a spiritual you're going to be in spiritual ministry uh, you will be faced with these practical things having to do with media and technology and if you have some information on it it'll help you uh, uh, make right decisions. It'll help you guide people in the right way uh, as you're all working together. Okay, so that's the motivation. That's the background uh, to this course. Uh, any questions on that? Any? Uh, is everybody okay? Are you clear? Okay. All right. I'm assuming <laughs> you're all with me. Um, let's uh, let's just uh, go through the uh, course overview, and then we'll get started today. Sorry, just getting over this. Okay. All right. Um, so you know what are we going to do in this course? Um, I'm going to we're going to start off first of all by just looking at what's happening globally in terms of media and technology. We'll just look at some data that's available, and so we'll just go online and look at this information. Of course, you can. Uh, study it and then also we look at the generation it's very important to understand you know uh, how the generation that we are engaging with you know how they are interacting with media and technology and how you know, the place media and technology has in their lives so that's very important for us to understand um, because ultimately these are tools by which we are bringing God's word to the their lives and so if we understand the tools the platforms uh, the areas where they are these people are engaging then we could you know work towards that in a meaningful way um, we'll just run through various methods that are being used in uh, ministry today uh, you know how, and we will see how things have changed over time whether it's in worship and the preaching of the word and so on we'll talk about some guidelines so you know what are some you know what we call as boundaries or gold standards we must maintain while we use changing methods the methods are changing technology is changing tools are changing but there are certain things we want to maintain and you talk about that then we start breaking it down into different uh, areas you know in the ministering the word in the places we gather um, in the way worship is done and the way creative arts is being used uh, and other things, print media, radio, and television. Um, so here, you know, we will kind of give you a little bit of technical information. Okay, if you want to set up something for live streaming, you know, here these are the thing products you'll need to use. Uh, if you want to, sell, you know, for your audio equipment, you know, these are things you need. Uh, uh, so on and so forth. You know, uh, so we'll give you that information. Uh, don't get you know, don't get overwhelmed by it. It's just, it's good for you to have it. And then when you, you know, when you are maybe setting up a church or a ministry, uh, you can tap into this information and so on. So look at entertainment, what's happening, digital communications, um, uh, establishing guidelines for the use of graphics and videos and get using social media, uh, digital equipment, software platforms, and data production, uh, confidentiality, and privacy. We'll talk a little bit about that. So we've got some interesting uh, ground to cover, and you know, if possible, I'll try to get some of our um, people to also come and talk to us. Um, uh, uh, you know, our head of media or person doing the audio and so on, if they can come and talk to us but generally I'll give you the content and um, if, if possible I get them to come as well and do a lecture or talk to us as we journey through okay so let's get started today uh, maybe just look at the trends and the gen generation divide so when we say media we're just looking at you know all forms of mass communication you know that, that's just 
you know, if you want to say very broadly, there's broadcast, publish, publishing, and the internet. Um, different platforms or me mediums of mass communication. And then within that, there are so many variations. You can have print books, magazines, newspapers, TV, uh, um, all kinds of form, all forms of video uh, and how these are being distributed and uh, nowadays mobile phones become a very important part of this whole uh, platform distribution and so on so when we talk about technology we're talking about the skills the processes the equipment the software and the hardware that is being used to deliver uh, content to people now it's very interesting, you know, to keep in touch with what's happening worldwide. So I'll just point us to these, uh, these, these uh, links, and of course there are many other places you can look at, and you can look at, you can also look at information that's very, sorry, specific to your area, or your region, or your target audience. But we'll generally look at. Uh, one minute. Let me just pause here. I'll share my screen so you'll be able to see everything. Yeah, so um, let me go to PDF. Yeah. So just give you, you know, we'll go to these links and I'll just share them with you. And it's very interesting to look at these numbers, how huge they are. So this one, a digital overview is actually opened on this. Yeah, yeah, digital around the world. That's an advertisement. Get rid of it. All right. Uh, so this is um, as of Jan 2023. Let's get rid of this ad here. Okay. So you look <laughs> way back in the 90s, uh, how many millions of people were uh, online? 2.6 and here we are 2023 we are over you know 5,158 million so almost 5 billion people online right so 5 billion people online so that means in some way or another we again we're saying potentially um, have the opportunity to reach out to them, connect to them online, right? That's, that's interesting to know. Then, of course, you can read all of this information here, but look at some other things that make you heard of this. And anyway, so from about eight, in, in, a, in about 8 billion people, we've got 68% of the people who are mobile phone users, about 5.4 billion people. We've got very close 64%, about 5.16 billion people online. And you've got almost 60%, about 4.7 people, 7, 6 billion people who are using, what active social media users. So what we're saying is, uh, this is actually a big opportunity for the church. And of course, we know that within this are people of different languages uh, and so on. So it's not simple and straightforward. But um, the fact is the church, when I say the church, I mean people across, um, uh, people globally, the church globally, we have the opportunity to reach people worldwide with these things. Um, I think here you have, yeah. So if you if you just run through this report um, and look at what's happening, let's run through this 2023. Uh, you can coordination specific um, global headlines. Yeah. So we saw this. Um, you see the growth. Uh, now you can go through this presentation. I'm just kind of letting you know that this is there for you to look at. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole presentation and all the data, but just for you, for us to know, hey, you can go in and look at all this data online. 
So what are we seeing? We're seeing that there is growth year on year. About 67 million people, of course, being added, but you see the 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 percentage of people getting on with their mobile phones, coming on the internet, and coming on social media. There's a constant growth, you know, uh, year on year. Millions, 137 million people getting on uh, social media. So, just to let us know, there is this great opportunity for us uh, to get on and reach people. Uh, let me see here. Okay, just one more slide and then we will uh, shift to the, but think about this here. When we are just looking at uh, the demographics, so yeah, we saw this. So if you look at male and female population, uh, we see the change here. Let's look at it. But worldwide, we're talking about 57% urban population we are talking about people who are uh, literate we uh, of course that's male, male literacy but so we do have the opportunity of reaching people now i know there would be groups that you know you can't necessarily use or you have to think of different ways of using technology depending on their access to the internet or their education the literacy and so on so we will have to modify it it's not like a uniform thing but generally speaking we have the opportunity to reach people who are connected to the internet who are in some way literate so that means we are able to communicate to them through uh, a language that you know uh, as a medium and that's a huge percentage uh, are close to about 86% of the world's population that we have the opportunity to reach. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. And you can get into more of this uh, data if you're interested. Um, now, if you look at, you know, where are people spending their time, etc. Right. So you've got. Uh, uh, okay, this is a little dated. This is a little older than the previous data, but you've got 4.7 billion people uh, who are social media users, and you've got uh, over 5 billion people on the internet, which we already saw. And where are these people? What are they doing? I'll just open up all these links here. So, what are they doing on the internet? <laughs> this is interesting to look at. Of course, uh, most of us are sending emails. Uh, so we're looking at one uh, internet minute. And again, this is a little dated, on a little less than a year old. But what are, what are people doing? Of course, most of us are busy sending emails. Um, and sadly, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people spending time on uh, cryptocurrency and um, there are lots of people sending text messages, people conducting searches, and then using other, you'll see here, they're spending a lot of time on social media, right? And then, of course, uh, online purchasing and so on. And then down here, Zoom meetings, people are busy talking, connecting with each other, and then doing home deliveries for various things. Uh, one last one, I think, about the young people. So. Uh, in terms of uh, what are the platforms people are using. Okay, okay, this is a little dated, almost a year old, but you see a large number of people, almost 2 billion people using WhatsApp. Others are using other platforms or means for communication. So this just gives us an idea that, okay, see, these are all the tools that people are using, and we need to... Uh, be aware of these things. So the point is, uh, a lot of this data is available for us um, to look at. Let me just pause for a moment to close these things here. Um, there, a lot of this data is available for us to go look at. And therefore, based on that, we can then begin to think about, all right, uh, you know, 
depending on where, where you are and what people and audience you're re reaching out to, you can then begin to think, you know, and formulate how your church or your ministry is going to use media and technology to reach the people that God has called you to reach. Okay, so that's one thing. You can look at the data, try to understand it, and then very meaningfully, very intelligently, and of course, with the help of God, with his wisdom, determine strategies to reach people whom you're called to reach. The other thing we must keep in mind when it comes to media and technology is to be, be aware of how different generations are engaging with media and technology, right? So we can, uh, well, you know, um, social scientists or those who study society, they kind of break down these generations every every 15 year periods, approximately. So uh, here you look at generation Gen Z between 1995 to 2010, Gen Alpha, coming up 2010 to 2024, and then Gen Beta, Beta 2020, they're out in the future. Um, and, you know, it's interesting to see how media and technology has influenced these generations. Uh, and we will look at uh, something that kind of gives us a bigger picture. I'm just mentioning this to you. Or did I miss the, no. Um, so, Gen Z, which basically would be our teens and young adults of today, a uh, large number of them that the church is responsible you know, for reaching. Um, what do we know about them? And, and you can look up this study that was done, uh, still about two, two years old, um, and when they did a survey. This is just a summary of that study. You can get the report online here. Um, that this generation, this Gen Z is the least religious generation ever, meaning they don't want to have religion the way it is traditionally known. For example, you know, you're 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 a Christian, or you know, so so on, but they want to, you know, they, they they want to make up their own religion, so to speak. They will decide. Okay, I want this. You know, it's to be a mishmash of various things, and they are the least generation. Uh, religious generation. They're also digital natives. Uh, they have. Uh, we will talk about this a little bit. You know, um, they they've basically grown up with technology from the very beginning. Uh, they are constantly connected. They're entrepreneurial. They like independence, making their own decisions. They are self learners. So, which means they are willing to consume content, uh, research, learn. You know, uh, uh, versus the traditional forms of education. It's not that they've all left school, but uh, they are more accustomed, more comfortable learning themselves, learning by themselves using, you know, all this, everything that's available, uh, accessible for them. And they're also ambitious and uh, interested in achieving things. So, you know, you can look into the fact that they are digital natives uh, and, you know, this whole thing about what is your social media image. So there is who they are in real life and who they are online. And uh, sometimes people could have different uh, online persona. Uh, all those things are happening. But uh, in a sense, they, they are very comfortable with all of that, right? Uh, they don't see social media as an enemy of authenticity. Uh, it just gives them, uh, uh, they feel it gives them an opportunity to express themselves, maybe in different ways, or sometimes even being anonymous. Uh, they can express themselves even if they're creating different personas online, etc. They don't see a problem with that. They are constantly connected on an average about eight hours a day uh, online. Uh, they, but then it also means they have this separation anxiety from their phones. It has other effects of sleep deprivation and mental health. And it's kind of interesting that uh, even here in Bangalore, uh, uh, I'm finding even young people, you know, uh, you know so they're in their late teens, early 20s, 
they are so aware of uh, their mental health and mental well-being you know and if we go back in time maybe 10 20 years this wasn't an issue at all we did, or at least we didn't speak about it or we didn't even know there was something like you got to take care of your mental health and things like that we just went through it but today these you know these teens and early 20s 20 year olds i'm speaking from you know what's happening what i see you happening here in Bangalore, they come out with their problems, challenges, and they are looking for answers in the area of their emotional well-being and mental health. You know, it's become so uh, an obvious thing that they, that they need to deal with, and they are looking for answers. And part of it, I'm not saying all of it, but part of it uh, is connected to uh, this whole engagement online and so on. Um, so uh, this data, of course, has to do with U.S. teens. That's all, and but I think it can be extended to some degree to other parts of the world. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that they feel that social media uh, affects them. You know, makes them feel sad or anxious or depressed. Sometimes they even experience depression suicidal thoughts out of their engagement in the use of uh, social media and the other things we could talk about this generation the, the gen z is i know we they're very entrepreneurial self-learners ambitious self-learners is i think um something for us to tap into meaning these people the gen z i'm talking about the teenagers the young adults they are ready to consume content and learn, explore, and research digitally, which I think is a big opportunity. But we have to be able to communicate it to them in a way they're willing to receive it. Right. So the fact that they are self-learners is a big opportunity, but it also means our communication of God's Word and our presentation of God's Word has to be in a way and in a form that they will com consume it and therefore and then in come to the truth right so we have to look at this as an opportunity and understand you know the, the the people that you are serving how are they consuming what is going to get to their heart go past their mind get to their heart so that you can bring truth and they are ready they, they that's part of their life they are consuming on by themselves you know uh, they search and they look for what they want so we have to be there um similarly you could talk about gen alpha which is just coming up it's very interesting to look at this we'll go and see this oh, okay i've got to share this share my sorry um let's share the screen Okay, so uh, you can go and look at this study here on Generation Alpha. Uh, let me see, they have a PDF. Yeah, view PDF. It's a nice infographic that compares. Okay, wait a minute. I think I have this. One minute, please. Let me. Open it. Oh, and I opened it. Yeah, okay. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this uh, this graphic I just downloaded from that same web website, Generation Alpha website. So it's very interesting to look. I mean, they're just basically tracking uh, the different generations, uh, how 
you know how you know what influenced them and how they are e engaging with each other in the workplace right so you we go back in um in time in time uh the gen x let me see here yeah so uh yeah so you know way back in time things that we were uh, familiar with you know there was what was called as myspace i don't know if i don't think it exists anymore uh, we would add you know we would use the pages we would use mp3 players and uh, blackberry and so on and fax machines and landlines cds and so on and all of these things and and this has given place to so much today right that way we are what we are engaging with and and uh, people today are you know familiar with uh, uh, the ipad the instagram 3d printers and uh, all these things are technology that's coming in to which this younger generation uh, is becoming familiar with and then you know things that they were looking forward to right so each generation has grown up in a different way i think the next slide puts it all together so so the earlier generation are known as builders the baby boomers the gen x gen y gen z you can see this so you know what were the key things they grew up with uh what were the music you know how do they listen to music you can see the changes uh, what are the leadership leadership styles? So you know it was more of a directive leadership, which then slowly Gen Z they're more coordinating, uh, Gen Y they guiding Gen Z they are uh, they prefer uh, empowering leadership, and uh, I think this one is the inspiring leadership. So and how do they consume their content? The cinemas, TVs, VCRs, internet devices, and now we are doing streaming. So we, you know, you can get into this study here and see how, you know, what these generations grew up with, and how, therefore, their whole lifestyle has been influenced by these changing technologies and changing ways in which they were consuming content. And it's interesting, uh, just you know, for us to understand that. So overall, just going back to what we were saying, it's important for us to uh, understand the generations that we are dealing with and also prepare our heads. So when you look at Generation Alpha, which they're little kids and they're growing up now, uh, their education, their medium of education may be very different from what we grew up with, so we are the ones ministering to them. We are the ones speaking into their lives, and we want to bring God's word to them. We want them to encounter Jesus. We want them to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. But we are coming from a different experience growing up, and we are speaking into the lives of generations, at least two, uh, or maybe three more generations, depending on the demographic of your congregation. You've got in your congregation, you know, maybe Gen Y, Gen Z, and the kids are there in Alpha. You know, or maybe you may have a wider demographic that you're ministering to. There will be people of your same generation, and then there will be maybe two generations that are very different. And the way they receive what we are communicating is very different, right? And so what we want to do is we want to learn as a church and as ministers, how to be, how do we use these tools, which are very comfortable, which these generations, Gen Z, Alpha, they're very comfortable. And for them, that's their norm. But how do we use? those tools to bring the word of God to them, bring the experience of the Holy Spirit to them so that they can also receive the truth and then, you know, grow up in that and then pass it on to the generations that will come, right? So 
today's lesson, today's lecture, main takeaways are one, there is data available for us and we need to look at it, try to understand what's happening globally. Second, recognize the fact that when we are speaking to people, we are actually speaking to different generations. So when you look into your congregation and uh, most likely there are different generations sitting and listening to you. And these generations have grown up differently, meaning media and technology have has played a very important role, especially in the younger generations who are listening to you. And it is important for us as a church to be able to speak to them using the medium that they have grown up with, that they are comfortable with, and be able to bring God's word to them in a way that they can receive it and be impacted. So that's the key takeaway uh, I want you to think about and uh, uh, be open to exploring these ideas. Okay, let me pause here, and give some time for questions and thoughts that people would like to ask or share before we close today. Now, uh, as we go forward in this course, uh, we, you know, uh, we will get a little technical. I will share with you the diagrams of what we are doing. For example, how 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 do we have our Sunday service set up? Um, that we what we're doing, you know, for our in our, inside the auditorium, and at the same time live streaming. Uh, what are the things we're looking at? Uh, what are the opportunities that are available uh, nowadays? Uh, using uh, you know what, what what is called as natural language processing, you can get real time translations of your audio or video can be dubbed in real time into multiple languages. Uh, all of that is possible with technology that's available to us, um, and so we we are exploring those things and we need to you know getting those things configured and I mean get those things configured and ready. But these are opportunities. Uh, available to us, etc. So I'll be sharing uh, these things with you, uh, and it hopefully it will encourage uh, many of us to explore those things. Okay. All right. Questions, thoughts? Please feel free to share, ask. Okay. Everyone's very quiet. Okay, how's everybody doing? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. You're doing good. Okay, thank you. Good. Mm. Okay. All right. So, yeah, let's close for today. Thanks for. Being on the class, I hope um, all of you are interested uh, in, in this uh, in this course, and I uh, look forward to learning and exploring uh, new ideas and new opportunities together. Okay, could somebody uh, close in prayer? Then we'll dismiss, please. Anybody could pray. Can I pray, Pastor? Go ahead, Asha. Maybe uh, we'll we'll uh, Kung Bill has to be on mute because we are praying next to. Him. Okay, go ahead. God, thank you, Lord, for this class. Thank you for helping us to understand the depths of the antiquity. Lord, I also pray for healing our Pastor God. By the stripe, he is healed. Lord, thank you so much, God, for healing Pastor mm -hmm. and those who are also not feeling well, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything, God. Um, 
In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, enjoy your time. Uh, see you all next week. God bless. I know. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you all. We get all our classes started next week. Thank you.